Do you don't. You've got subordinates. You don't have followers. As a matter of fact, I know some instances when you become a manager, you don't, not in my case, but you didn't even have subordinates. You had people who were on your organization chart, and maybe they weren't even subordinate to you because they were kind of like, you know, going around you. So I think that in servitude, you do and can succeed. And I want you to remember that. And don't be afraid to go out there and live your Christian values. So I'd like to get back now to my number three. So if you have energy and you come and insert that in the energizing bunny and maybe two or three of you and you start energizing people, great. Are you working on the right things? You won't get rewarded. They'll say, great, but you know what? We wanted to go right and you went left. You know, that was a great idea, but not something we really wanted to do. You know, in the last 10 or 20 years, I think the American business has become leaner, unfortunately, through a lot of downsizing, uh, but through pro productivity games, through the Internet, through, uh, through technology, has improved its productivity significantly. So we should just stop now and we've, we're done. No, you're the next generation that's going to have to improve the productivity tenfold again. You know, we were forced into this by our worldwide Japanese competition, okay, who could do things faster and better than is the Chinese and the Indian competition. Efficiency means finding better ways to achieve tasks. It's a constantly improving process, and if you haven't looked at Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma, as we practice it, and everybody at Xerox has got to go through that process, you probably ought to go find a course uh, on campus or off campus, or you know, you can learn remotely and, and look at least what Six Sigma and Lean Six Sigma is, is all about and how you improve error rate and how you improve efficiency in the system. It reduces capital or time. And capital, I mean not just dollars. I mean human capital and time is, you know, time is valuable. So constantly you need to change. And you will need to change during your career. Now, I had a career I started out as an engineer, believe it, in the computer industry at UNIVAC. Anybody remember UNIVAC? No, you, were never, you weren't even born then. It's now called Unisys. Anybody remember Unisys? Ah, very good. Anybody remember 80-column cards? No. Okay, well, you used to program on Fortran cards, which were actually, you, some, somebody, people here might remember, and I used to design the machines that would actually punch holes in those cards so that you could program the computer. world has changed, right? Significantly. I mean, we, you know, new technology, old technology. That's my memory stick that I brought my presentation down on, right? But I've been through all those changes from here to here in my career over 30 years. Just think of the changes you will be through in your personal life. I went from engineering to finance to product planning to pricing to marketing to business planning to strategy to selling in Europe to doing contracts with the Japanese, all in a career. And I did that at the mid-level management level, <coughs> some as an analyst, and I did it at the executive level. Again, you have to change. What happens if you don't change? Well, a very wise man said, I think you'll recognize who said this, it's not necessary to change. You don't have to change. Survival is not mandatory. <laughs> right? Nobody says, okay, don't change. That's fine. You're over here. But the changers are moving ahead. I want you to move ahead, and I want you to think about not only how you change the organization, the resources, but how you change your personal life, what you need to do to succeed every year. Take kind of like an inventory. So can anybody guess what my last E is? So I had energy, energize. You have to be efficient because nobody's going to pay you, pay you if you, you have energy and you energize but you went left instead of right, they're going to say you went the wrong way. You have to be effective. 
oh my gosh, we actually had to read that lesson to go through that class, and we actually had to study, and we actually had to take the test, right? We actually had to achieve results. It's imperative. So if, if, if you're in business, if you're Ursula Burns, results count, right? If you're the stockholder, it's how many pennies did you get above the estimate? When I was managing in Europe sales operations, it was a 30, 60, 90 day outlook. It was what did you give me this month? How many did you sell? It wasn't, I had energy. I, had, and I needed that, right? I needed energy to get results. So I needed that. I needed to energize my, my troops and, and other people outside my organization, you'll find. And I needed to be efficient. But in the end, I had to actually deliver something that was valuable to the corporation. So it kind of reminds me of two business people. And they're sitting there at Starbucks again, spending a lot of money, because they think they're rich. Okay? So not only are they having, they're having a $2 muffin, too, with the $6, so it's like $10 each. And one says to the other, how was your revenue? And the other guy, Tom, says, you know, my revenue is fantastic. You know, my revenue was up 30% this year. Woo! Wow, you know, we're doing great. 30%. Have another six bucks of coffee. Fantastic. You know, my revenue is just great. Mm, okay, yeah, thanks for the coffee. How was your profit? Oh, profit? Well, profit was okay. It was 10%, up 10%. Not too bad. You know, we did have some margin issues. So while I gained 30% on revenue, I only had 10% on profit. You know, we paid a little bit too much. You know, oil prices was going up. We had some margin issues. Oh, oh okay. But, you know, still good. We're still having a Christmas party. We're still celebrating. Everything still looks good. Mm, great. How was your cash flow? Oh, cash flow is terrible. You know, really bad. Cash flow. We don't have any cash. Matter of fact, we bought too much inventory. It's sitting in the back of the trucks. You know, we're going to have to close two plants, and we might have to close the company. Right? Know what's important. Cash is king, I think uh, Kramer would say, but uh, I watch him. I'm trying to manage my stock portfolio. Know your results measure. What's a result, results measure? <coughs> Has anybody heard of a results measure? A results measure is what you're trying to achieve. So it could be revenue, could be profit, it could be cash flow, it could be market share. It's the results, the end results that the corporation is trying to achieve. But you have to, you don't manage revenue. You manage performance measures. A P measure, anybody know what a P measure is? It's called a performance measure. Is there an example of a performance measure that anybody can give me? See, I got questions for you. Later you'll have questions for me. <laughs> well, a quick example of a performance measure might be how many calls did the salesperson make today? Because I know if that salesperson, when I was in sales, made 10 calls today and 10 calls tomorrow and 10 calls the next day and the next day and the next day, they would eventually have enough calls and fill up my bucket of calls equaled eventually in some kind of uh, formula meant we actually sold something. So a performance measure, what leads to a results measure? It's the way you get there. So you have to understand what am I trying to achieve, your results measures, but how do I get there? Now if you're in class, you might be, performance measure might be I'm trying to get an A. That might be a performance measure. Or I'm just trying to get more knowledge. That might be a good one too. 